We're gonna give you a, a couple of players to keep your eyes on because we're keeping tabs on them. That's right, we're doing all the work. I know you're thinking, oh, who gets to go on vacation for four weeks? We do, but it's not because we didn't finish our homework and turn it in before we left. Now, these are guys who are kind of flying under the radar or rookies who I do think might be, uh, I'm not gonna say might be. These are guys that are gonna be a factor this year. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. And we're going to start with the guy that sort of spurred this idea, a friend of the show, Buccaneers running back Rashad White, okay? Leonard Fournette out of the way. The lane is cleared for him to be the guy in Tampa, and we hope he is. Leonard Fournette was supposed to be on our show and he no-showed. Yeah. He overslept, Leonard Fournette. <laughs> so we're all for Rashad White, okay? Last year, no, we love Leonard. Last year, while playing behind Lenny, he still managed to put up a whopping 770 total yards, 50 catches, three scores. He and I talked about that versatility. We talked about him being a stud in that backfield. And you can imagine how everyone down there is excited to see him be the lead dog. In early April, Jason Light said that Rashad's going to be a stud. And it wasn't just lip service. And you know how I know that? Because the Bucks didn't draft a single running back in the draft a few weeks later, despite plenty of opportunities to pull that trigger. And while there are some doubters out there, fine, I'm sure there are, Rashad's drawing inspo from that Bucks fan base and seems more than ready for the opportunity. Listen to what he said to me a, week, a couple weeks ago. You've been waiting on moments like this your whole life, but everybody got a right to their own opinion. Um, it's just up to me to be that, you know, that guy to back it up and to have, like you said, the fans and people believe in me. Uh, it, it, it makes, you know, it's hard. It's heartwarming for sure. He's one of my favorite guys we've talked to, really. I'm really rooting for him. And I think we were looking at fantasy a couple of weeks ago. He's really under the radar still. Yeah, he's out. He's outside the top twenty-four at running back, so he's like a running back three in fantasy. I in also a, love in by a the PPR way. league. What are we doing? Yeah, like, you gotta grab him. You think Baker or Trask aren't gonna be trying to get him the ball as soon as possible? How's their O line? Yeah, the O line. They've they've yeah. made some adjustments there. Didn't have a great year last year, but um, but yeah, they've they've kind of overhauled it. I like the Bucks colored roses, by the way. You're really going all in on Rashad. I would call them up in Adams colors, and I think they stole it from us, but that's okay. Um, okay, let's move on here. Lions running back. Oh, my gosh. You like this kid? Talk to me. Jameer Gibbs. Tell me. Love him. Why? Versatility. All right. So kind of same thing as Rashad White. We love that. Okay, so let's do it here. Here's the rookie everybody's so excited about. Explosive as a runner. Ability to line up at receiver. But, I mean, let's not act like Gibbs doesn't possess some of the very same traits here. I mean, look at this. Bijan Robinson sort of comparison vibes, right? This isn't the only guy with highlights out of OTAs. Detroit signed David Montgomery. Sure, we love David Montgomery. I wish him the best. So there will be a little competition there for touches in the backfield, but we're going to see Gibbs lining up all over the field just like he did at Bama. He's jumping into this Detroit offense, and already, you know, they're set. They were top five last year as far as the offensive side of things go, so we should see big big things out of him this year. And I'd like them to stay on the field as long as possible and give that defense a little rest. Like, let's not roll the defense out there every three seconds, Dan. That's a good point. Yeah, definitely help that defense out, keeping him off the field. But if it wasn't for Bijan, we'd be talking about Gibbs so much more because I think he's that special of a talent. Yeah. So I love that you're giving him giving him some love here because I think I'm, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a big year. They used him at receiver a ton at Alabama. We talked about Bijan so much, all that footage out of OTAs of them lining him up in the slot. We're going to see the same thing out of Gibbs, and I think it's going to be too special. many Too many guys in that backfield, though, for me to get excited about him? I don't think so because I think he could be out there with Montgomery. You could see him line up in the slot with Montgomery at tailback. We loved Montgomery when he was coming out, remember? Yeah. Mm, now he's got a division with a division rival. Okay, uh, now let's get to a couple of receivers and this isn't the first time we've mentioned it, but we're just putting our stamp on it as we head out the door for some vacation. It's Calvin Ridley. Out of sight, out of mind, and meaningfully so, but I just want to remind everyone of what he's capable of when he is on the field. I forgot about this a bit until Hamilton put it on my radar during one of his breakdowns. Look at the numbers he put up last year, a full year. That's back in 2020 was the last time we saw that. He was top five in yards, top 10 in touchdowns, and that was in less than a full slate of action. So now you put Ridley in a Doug Peterson visor offense. You know, he's... He's the number one guy. Trevor Lawrence will take another step up, and I think we're going to see a career year out of him. Another receiver I like. We like the young guys. We told you we're going to bring this here with the Vikings rookie, Jordan Addison. Vikings fans, you're insane, first of all. We'll get to that another time, another day. And, and I do love Jackson Smith and Jigba. We are a Seattle Seahawks show record, but we got to give Jordan some love. And yeah, you got Justin Jefferson there, but situation matters so much when you look at which rookie receivers pop up. And he is, because of Justin Jefferson and a whole other bunch of reasons, in the best possible spot to kind of have, what, what kind of year though? Like monster year? 
What does monster year mean for a rookie? I can say like 1,100, 1,200 yards. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Cause they throw it, they throw it around a lot. Will he have a better? Will you put your name on him having a better year than Jackson Smith and Jigba because it's a more balanced offense where he's not, you know? Yeah, I think in Seattle. I, I think so because uh, I think statistically, when you look at it, the Vikings were the third he heaviest passing offense last year, and now no Dalvin Cook, you think they're they're probably going to air it out a little bit more, right? I don't um, know. A lot of opportunities, and with all the attention that Justin Jefferson is going to be getting, you got to think he's going to get some favorable matchups. I mean. They're going to pass the ball even more, I feel like, with the Vikings. You get rid of Dalvin Cook. I know he caught the ball a little bit, but, I mean, having the best receiver in the game in Justin Jefferson helps him. So, hopefully, it frees up Addison to make big plays out the gates, and you're right about that. Okay, the last one. Oh, my gosh. Irv Smith. When he got injured a couple of years ago and he was on the Vikings, more heartbreak yeah. for the Vikings, he's... Uh, we were robbed, I think, of a couple years of greatness. That doesn't matter. Throw that out the window. He's still only 24 years old. Um, you know, he missed the entire 2021 season. He had to complete with looks with Kyle Rudolph and TJ Hawkinson last year. But now it's a bit of a fresh start. And where else to go but Cincinnati? Love it for him, okay? And he's talented, previously underutilized. We can make the argument of freshness, even though he's coming off of an injury-plagued four-year stretch with the Vikings. Look at what Joe Burrow has helped his two predecessors achieve. Okay, He loves the tight end. C.J. Uzama put up career highs in catches, yards, touchdowns in one full season with Joey B. Hayden Hurst had a career high in reception despite missing four games. Chase and Higgins demand so much spotlight, not only on yachts with Instagram models, but also on the field between the hash marks. You know, they get lots of shine, and when that happens, the tight end position can grab some balls can do what they want to do and Irv Smith Jr. has shown the potential if he can stay healthy I think we're going to see him become a major factor hopefully in this offense so these are just some guys that I like for your fantasy for your I don't know for your odds for your whatever for you to sound cool at the bar picking up chicks hey Janice you think I think Jordan Addison's really going to pop off this year want to go on a date swipe left this is there you go Keep tabs on these guys. And who did I miss? I, I'm sure you'll let me know. Okay, coming up next on the show, the U.S. Open is in L.A. PGA Tour star Will Zelatoris. Oh, that's a nice smile. All right, let's talk about it with Will, rising star. Janice loves the Vikings number Janice three Janice is like, oh, my gosh, hey.